Today I'm going to talk about one of the most misunderstood concepts in a hitting motion. And that is that somehow having an open club face at P3 is increasing the timing in the golf swing, which is actually the opposite. The assumption is that if the club face is open and we have to rotate our forearms into the strike, that somehow this form rotation is just going to continue and roll the toe over like this. So people think of this going on where you would have a lot of rotation happening from open, which would appear to be a big timing move. But that's not what we're doing at all here with an advanced hitting action. The first thing that we need to understand is how much is the rotation of the body integrated into closing the club face. If I have the club face open at P3, I could not rotate and then I would have to use my forearms to do all of the rotation to get back to the ball. But if I used my pivot torso rotation, I can square that club face up and get it almost back to square purely with rotation. I'm doing absolutely nothing with forearm rotation here and I can get that to about 10 degrees open, okay? Now, one of the things that we teach is to work down the 430 line. So again, I'll say if the golf ball were here, three clocks the back of the ball, 430 on the inside quadrant. We've got the shaft coming down the 430 line. We have the club face skyward. I make that same motion of the body rotating and I can get that club face to about 10 degrees open. Okay, and that's just with body rotation. Now the other point of confusion is that we have to uncock the wrists also to get to the ball. So if I put this ball here, you can see that if I don't uncock my wrists, the club's going to be here. So I've got to get my wrists uncocked down to the ball. Okay, so this motion, when the torso is rotating, we have to uncock our wrists to hit the ball. Okay, so that's critical that we understand that. The, the motion of the forearm rotation and wrist cock have to happen in unison. They have to happen together. So as the torso is rotating, we are basically uncocking the wrists to get down to the ball. We're going to uncock. Now you can see here that the club face has not flipped over. All I've done is I've uncocked my wrists to get down to the ball. Now again, getting back to the 430 line. If I'm on the 430 line, then I have the, I have the club coming more from the inside. If I don't quite get it squared up with the body rotation and I'm a little bit open if I'm coming in 10 degrees from the inside and I'm hitting the ball with a 10 degree open face I'm really hitting a straight shot so we see this with a lot of players that aim left and hit a kind of a push block at the target Lee Trevino right need I say more one of the greatest ball strikers did that there have been many others I do that too. I probably aim between five, six, seven, eight degrees left of the target for that reason. So we're really not just rotating our forearms solely. We, we do need a certain amount of strength to uncock the wrist actively. So where a swinger would just kind of have the centrifugal force sort of pulling on the club and letting this sort of happen in a swing motion as a hitter we're actively uncocking the wrist into the ball with a very very minimal amount of forearm rotation there is just only a, a slight a slight bit if our torso is rotating well through the strike there's a little bit of rotation but we practice this but these happen in unison the uncocking of the wrist and the forearm rotation happens Whatever amount is happening is happening together at the same time and in unison. And we do this 
actively, we're striking this actively, okay, to create power because there is power in the uncocking of the wrist downward. That's why when we, we use a hammer, we use the uncocking of the wrist. Nobody takes a hammer and tries to do it sideways with the forearm rotation. There's actually more strength here than there is here. So we're basically just hammering down on the ball with an uncocking of the wrist and a, a, a bit of forearm rotation that's compensating for whatever we can't do with the, uh, the torso rotation. However, to our eye from above the ball, it very much visually appears as if it's a, a forearm rotation striking into the ball. But I, I try not to confuse my students with separating these out into downward wrist cock and forearm rotation because these are happening at the same time. And the bottom line is all we really have to concentrate on is just making contact with the ball. If we didn't uncock the wrist, we would just, we would just miss the ball from above. But because we're going to hammer down on that thing right, and make contact with the ball, this happens just automatically. It's not something we need to sit there and analyze and be thinking about. But for those that are more analytical and trying to understand all this stuff, well, that's basically what's happening. Where there is a slight bit of, of rotation, forearm rotation, mostly a hammering down onto the ball. But the hammering down isn't beyond a certain point, okay? In other words, if, if I have this amount of wrist cock, I'm only hammering down to where the, to where the ball is. I'm not uncocking the wrist fully, you know? I mean, I can't because the ground is, the ground is in the way. So of course we're gonna see the shaft and this left wrist. We're not gonna see this unless we were trying to swing like Mo Norman did, which is an entirely different method. We're gonna see the shaft and the, and the uh, left forearm, an angle here. It's not gonna be this angle. We're gonna hammer down on it, but we're still gonna have that angle. Now, from there, once we've done that, I mean, I can sit there and, and stop that, that hammering down. I can, I can stop here. I can go really hard and stop here. I could stop, in other words, I could stop here. I could stop here or I could stop here, right? This is more spatial awareness. This has nothing to do with timing, okay? So what we're doing is we're creating a situation where our entire body is acting like a, like a hinge on a door, okay? There's no, you don't have to worry about timing on a hinge on a door. The hinge is gonna go back and forth. It's secured at the door frame and it goes back and forth and nobody's worrying about the door opening wide open and then closing and hitting the door jam. Nobody's concerned about the timing because there's no timing. It's just moving on a hinge. So we have anchor points in the ground. We can create a situation to where our body is, is just acting as a hinge and we're just hinging, we're taking timing out of it. We're increasing the range of motion by opening the club face. We want that club face open so that it gives the green light for our body to rotate into the strike, okay? And I can come through and the more open and cleared out and faster that I am, the less I even have to use any form rotation at all. We really wanna feel like if I've got this left, this right wrist bent back, okay? And that, and that appears to be open, I come in and strike the ball, bam, I'm, I'm square and I just keep that thing looking at the target. There's no, there's no timing going on here at all. If I cross this point, there's no timing. I don't have to worry about any timing at all. Just hitting this right here. This is the same thing that we're doing in the golf swing. We're here, we're just hitting the golf ball. We're just taking the timing out of it. We're not flipping, we're not straightening the right arm, we're not closing the face, all that timing stuff. We're not doing any of that. We're just rotating our body level, squaring up the club face as much as we can with the rotation and hammering down, which is a spatial awareness issue. You, I've got it in my hammering here, and my hammering here, here, or all the way down to the ground. So the spatial awareness is an, an element of coordination that we de develop and we practice, but we don't worry about the timing. We're taking the timing out of it. So the more that we're open, we're increasing the range of motion of of our rotation so it gives us the green light we can save our torso rotation on the downswing and then as we rotate 
and we square up the club through our rotation, we do that in an accelerating way later. So we can save the rotation. No, nobody was better than this than Ben Hogan. Ben Hogan used a lateral move and he saved his rotation and then came in, hammered down on the ball, everything went around, picked up the speed of his torso rotation, past impact, and beyond. Now, the other thing I promote is the cupped left wrist, and that's a terrifying thing to people. Cupping the wrist, oh no, you don't want to do that. However, boy, you sure see a lot of great strikers with that cupped wrist at the top, including Ben Hogan. Plenty of images of Hogan with a cupped left wrist, even talking about it, showing he's got his wrist cupped as well. Now, why would we want to have that? Because, because cupping the wrist opens the club face. It gives us more range of motion for us to then have the green light to rotate and accelerate our torso into the strike so that we can use our body as a, as a hinge, anchored into the ground, and strike the ball repeatedly without timing. Okay, now all of this has to be relating to how are we going to hold shaft flex? Well, if we're accelerating our torso through the strike, then we're much more likely to hold shaft flex than we are if we just stall and we flip, okay? As the left shoulder accelerates, what does that do? It tends to flatten out this left wrist dynamically, okay? It's gonna flatten it dynamically. Now, this is very, very important because we actually, as hitters, can try and feel as if our left wrist is actually cupped at, at impact. But because we're accelerating, it gets flattened out dynamically. So I want to use the loft of the club. I don't want to bury the thing into the ground and just hit little worm burners. I want to feel like I'm, get, I'm utilizing the loft of the club. But the torso accelerating is going to flatten out that left wrist. And it's going to do it every time. So once we strengthen and we train ourselves to do this, then it just eliminates that issue, gives us the right impact alignments, takes timing out of the swing because we're doing it with the rotation of our body and we're accelerating up into our finish. We can also develop speed from the uncocking of the wrist, which because it's on an inclined plane, it's sideways, we're not hammering straight down, it's moving while we're rotating and we hammer down so there's speed here and a little bit of the rotation that we get from the forearm depending on how well our torso is accelerating and rotating that day. On a day where I'm a little sluggish going through it, I'm gonna move the ball a little bit back in my stance and I'm just gonna play a push block all day and I'm just gonna hit it at the pin all day long. Another day I'm rotating a little bit stronger and quicker then I can line up a little bit more square. We've gotta remain adjustable and adaptable to our body situation for each and every day. Anyway, I hope that helps clear up some of the misunderstanding about this. I've been getting a lot of emails and questions about this, and uh, so thank you all for asking those questions, and uh, I hope this has cleared up and things make a little bit more sense. Please visit us at advancedballstriking.com. Join the forum, a lot of great conversations going on there, a lot of information. And we will see you around soon.